Today, we're talking about components in Figma. Components in Figma are a very powerful resource when doing design work, as they allow you to create reusable designs. Now, in this little mini app we have here, we have this hypothetical food manager. And we have two cards with a list of food items. Now, why would you want to use a component? Well, looking at these two cards, they look very similar. In fact, almost identical. Only thing different is the items inside the card and how many items there are, but they have the same color, the same shape, and the same size. But what if we wanted this one to be different than this one? What if we want drinks to be a different color than foods? Let's go ahead and double click in this group, select this background color, and let's just make this a nice red. Great. Now we have a different color here, a different color here. But now I've decided that I want to go ahead and change the size of the logo or the size of this title here, maybe it'd be 24 pixels. And I want to shrink the height of this header, move this and we'll move this text up. All right. But now these don't match. So now you can see what the problem is here. I would need to go into every single one of these cards and make that change for them all to match. Now, this was a little contrived example because I only have two cards, but imagine if I had 30 of these pages, two cards each, or maybe I had 20 cards in one page. The, the, the way this is helpful is that as it scales out, it saves you an immense amount of time. So let's go ahead and create a component from this card and let's reset these back to the beginning and we can see how we can work with them in component form here. Go ahead and undo back to the beginning. All right, so to make a component is very simple. You wanna go ahead and make the item you wish to convert to a component, just make your design as normal, then select it, right click, and we're gonna to go to create component. Once you do that, notice in the layers panel here that the icon has changed and the color has changed. This purple signifies a component, and these four little diamonds here signify a master component. When you make more components, you'll have children and master components. If you wanna edit the way a component looks and have that trickle down to the other components, you will edit the master component. You can make overrides to the children components. I'm going to explain to you what those are in a second. What I like to do with my master components is keep them somewhere separate than inside the design file itself. So you either can make a separate artboard somewhere else or make a separate page and put them on there. For now, let's make a separate artboard and we're going to call this artboard components. And now I'm going to take this, I'm going to duplicate it. So that way I have a child component in the same spot. And now I'm gonna select the master component and I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to my components area. Now I can keep all of my master components organized. These are the components that I will edit to make trickle down changes to all the children components. Right here you can see the icon is one giant diamond. This signifies a child component. Remember, the master component has four small diamonds and the child has one large diamond. Let's go ahead and delete this card right here. This is just a normal card, not a component. Let's go ahead and delete that. And now let's duplicate this card here. Go ahead and move this out about 110 pixels. You see I was holding shift while moving to increment the spacing by 10 pixels per arrow press. Without shift, it's a single pixel per arrow press. So now I have two identical status cards here. And these are both children components. Now if I go up back to my master component and I decide to change the font size to 24 and I hit enter, and I go back down here, we can see the font size has increased for both of those. Maybe to have a more clear example, we can change this fill color to be something like green. Boom, both have changed. 
super powerful already. Go ahead and undo those. But now we're gonna look at where the real use cases come in. Because components would already be useful if you could have them act as just a, a global change per uh, all child components, but they're not really reusable at that point. To make them reusable, what we wanna do is override each child component. To do that in Figma, it's really simple. If you're coming from a sketch background, typically an overrides will exist in your uh, side pane over here as a, a property you could change. In Figma, it happens in the layer panel and on the components themselves. So if I wanna change the title, say of this uh, right-hand side foods, I would go ahead and twirl this down, twirl down the heading, there it is, title, and then we can double click and change this to say uh, drinks. And then I wanna make this background uh, red. Now I've done those changes locally to this child component. This one has not changed and the master has not changed. Any changes made to a child component will not override the master. If you wish to make any changes done to a child component become the new master component, you can do that by updating it. Um, I believe you can do that by selecting instance and then push overrides to master. This would happen fairly rarely, but it could be useful in case you're doing some designs and decide, hey, you know what? I want this to be the new default for this component. So now that I have these changes, I've changed the texts here. I've changed the color here. Let's go ahead and change uh, this these these list items right here. Let's let's hide this item and let's rename these to be uh, say water and milk and uh, say soda. All right, we've renamed these. Now, you know what? I've decided that I'd prefer my card titles to be a bit bigger. Well, if I go back to my master component and I select the header and I drag it down, and then I select these list items and I move them down as well, and I increase the size of this title here, maybe to 26, or let's go all the way to 32, move this back in the center, and I come back down, both have changed. So the way overrides work is whatever you change, uh, it only affects that specific child and only that property. Everything else is still inherited from the parent. That's why the size changed, the positions changed. But if I go back to the master component and I decide, hey, you know what? By default, I want all instances of this card to be green. The unchanged cards take effect to the master and this change stays changed because the color had changed here. Now, that is components in a basic level. They do have a lot more to them. Let's go ahead and look at some other examples on how we could use this to better enhance the usability of these cards. Right now we have these list items and if I wanted to change the way one of these looks by changing the background color, I would have to come in here and change each background for each list item. It does not change uh, on these other items. Even if I go to the master component and I update the background colors, I have to do it for each list item here. And that's not very helpful. So let's go ahead and break these out to be their own components. So I'm gonna right click on this card, a single item, and I'm gonna go right click, and I'm gonna do, um, oh, see? So you are allowed to have components inside other components, but you cannot make a component once you're inside of an existing one. It's a little bit confusing, but essentially if I wanna put another component inside here, I have to pull this out of this component. So I'm dragging this from here outside of the component, and then I'm just gonna move this over here. So it's its own separate instance now. Now I can right click and create a component. And now I can duplicate this, and now I've got a child instance of it. 
Let's go ahead and delete the rest of these. And now I'm going to take this child instance and I'm going to bring it inside of my component. So now I've got this as a master component containing children components of these list items. The parent list item is out here. The master list item, I should say, is out here. So now that I've got this in here, I will duplicate this, move it down 16 pixels two more times. Let's go ahead and uh, make some default text for this. Uh, we'll call this like bread, uh, rice, uh, and chips or something. All right, come back down and we'll notice that these both updated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide this item. Uh, that's one thing you can do as well on a child's component is you can hide or show layers and those will stay overwritten for that child component. So if I don't want all of these shown, I can tick them on and off and that will stay for this child component. A layer hidden or shown acts as an override. So now if I want to change maybe the color of these backgrounds, instead of doing it for each single one, I can go to the master component for this card single item and I can select the background, change the color, and now all of them get updated across all of the components. Now that I think is incredibly powerful and you can see already how you can start nesting master components with children components, how you can create a really nice complicated uh, but useful component architecture and there are plenty of design systems that utilize this nesting component architecture uh, in really efficient ways. In fact, I would say if you want to really learn how to best utilize these components, take a look at some existing design systems in Figma and look at how each system handles different kinds of overrides and, and nesting of components. Uh, there's quite a few different ways to do it. Uh, I would argue there are very few wrong ways. It's whatever makes sense for you and your team. Now this is a, a first look at how components work in Figma. Hopefully you can see the power and how they will help you reuse components, make components dynamic, allow you to give children based overrides to allow you to easily reuse a component and really see the potential for how this can both speed up your workflow uh, and make it more dynamic for requests or for different examples. Really get used to components, really practice with these because uh, this is the bread and butter of any UI design tool. Moving forward from this, we're going to take a quick look in the next episode at plugins. And then after that, we're going to jump into some more design practices and we're going to learn some more skills in Figma. Until then, I'm Max.